minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Does that feel good? Yeah. Good whoop, whoop. morning. Good yeah. afternoon, Shake and Bakers, and welcome to the Valentine's edition of the Shake and Bake Show with Stevie Fast Jackson. Courtney did her hair, makeup, and has a glass of wine and a cute picture Courtney, of a dog. Courtney taking it straight back to 2006 with the crinkle hair. All you're missing is a double pop collar polo there, you freaking yeah, so snap bracelet. She's got to get a snap bracelet. And uh, <laughs> me and Lyle working around the clock trying to keep our companies afloat, Barnett. Yes. Y'all don't know what I've been doing today. Uh, well, I think I, I probably do. Been doing. All right. know what I've been doing the last nine months. I'm celebrating the end of the biggest event I've ever done. I'm allowed to fuck off a little and clip my hair. That's not true. Not in racing. It doesn't yes, matter if you I work am. hard Ask for 36 years. Racing. You still have to just work until you're in. Matt Parental Advisor. Welcome please. to episode 30 of Shake and Bake Show. Uh, okay. I will be honest with you guys and gals. This is the least prepared I've ever been. I was machining apart 45 seconds ago in the life. And uh, how is everybody doing? What have y'all been up to? I'm I'm gonna start because Courtney's got to go off here in just a second. But, but uh, <clears throat> since our last show, uh, the it's our busiest time of the year at MacFab, uh, which is great. Um, we've had days of sixteen and seventeen boxes, eighteen boxes come in. Uh, we are preparing to do beadlocks on site at South Georgia. Whether our list is full, there's thirty one sets of wheels on the list to be done on site during lights out right now. Um, so we don't have any room left, but anybody that's watching that wants to get their wheels be locked, you can bring them to South Georgia. If you're going, I will transport them back to North Carolina, be lock them and ship them back to you at a, at a discounted rate from our normal shipping rates. But be locking is it and trying to uh, stay afloat here at this new house we've gotten because I'm getting just by the new house uh, blues. So that's me. It's Lyle in a nutshell. Well, I'll go ahead and go because I know Courtney wants to just blast us off for about 35 minutes. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. We have been working our ass off around the clock, uh, not only uh, getting the Shadow 3.0 ready, but also preparing our Art of Inco racing team to uh, do some preseason testing in Bradenton this week. Uh, so it is literally, I worked 106 hours last week. Uh, it's Tuesday and I'm already at 38. Uh, so get you some of that. And uh, it'll be uh, pretty much an all-nighter again for me tonight. So that's what I've been doing. Been doing some debuting of the new hot rod, which was a bunch of work. Um, I think we got some images of that we'll show in a little bit. But that's what I've been doing. KTR, kind of like Lyle's business, is just expanding and wide open. It's all that you can stand to do. Uh, it's, it's fun growing a business. Uh, at the end of the day, it's tough. Uh, but we're having a good time. All right, curly hair. What have you been doing? Do you want us to mute our mics? Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know why y'all pick on me so much. Me and Lyle can go backstage and like listen to some music while you talk. All right. If you guys can sit on one of the biggest events in drag racing, also I'll let you have your moment and I'll support you through it instead of the altar. Okay. Um, oh, I good. Wanna, I want to address something. That Courtney, what have you been doing and why your nails look so nice? Well, I did these for the pro race because oh. I do care about what my nails look like when I hold the microphone. So oh, no. I did the old the yeah. old red. Um, the flow slash elite red for the race. But um, I want to address something that's been in the comments. This is a crimper. It took 10 minutes. If I curl my hair, it takes 30. So there ain't no extra effort. This is lazy. Um, two, we just put on the coolest race ever. And I've got so much to say. I've already given Matt all the things. I know we've got to talk about lights out. I know we got to fluff Stevie. I know we got to talk about Lyle stuff, all the things. But like, I feel like we need to give a good chunk of the show to what went down in drag racing over the past six days. Okay. So, uh, I, why do I need to be fluffed? Cause you're Stevie and we love you and you love you. I do love me. Okay. Yeah. And your car it's, it's episode 3.0. It's episode 30. So it's okay. episode 3.0. Oh, and we always got to keep you happy. There we go. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, there it is. Now Stevie's happy. Look at that sexy son of a bitch. Oh, that well, thing, that thing is sexy. Really 
I will say this. I want to give a shout out to Ryan and all of his team at RK Racecraft. And I have had a lot of race cars and I've had a lot of really nice race cars from a lot of great chassis companies. This is the nicest race car I've ever seen. And I'm not saying that because it's mine. It's uh, they, they took a long time to do it. Um, and it shows. And if you guys want to see a work of art before I screw it all up next week, come look at it. Don't everybody's, screw it up. Everybody's dogging me out about my hat. You gotta have a man. What's wrong with your hat? Point it down. It's too manly. It's it's too girthy for some folks. Oh, okay. Well, fuck him, I guess. I mean, this is Tidwell right now. He's on suicide watch because he wants to come to Radio at Radio vs. the World, but he knows he's gonna get get. Did you all see? I know David. I know Double Shit was in here. Did you see the the one? There's so many memes from the Super Bowl. We gotta talk about Super Bowl too. There's so many memes of that where Travis is yelling at Reed. But my favorite was Flow Racing Camera Richard Freeman when Erica wins. I've yes, yeah, that. that was pretty funny right there. I didn't see any of those. My social media team brought it to my attention this morning when I was still at work at four a.m. We need to do a meme, so we did one. And Scott's the easiest one to pick on right now. That was pretty good. Um, I want to know. Somebody said Reinhardt was hating. What did what was Reinhardt saying? Y'all comment back on that. Yeah, I've um, been disconnected from the world, so I don't even. There might be a new world war. Nuclear bomb got dropped. If it hadn't happened at the KTR shop, I don't know about it. I do want to say to all the shaken bakers watching that this is going to be a shorter show than we normally do. We're gonna breeze through some shit. Each of us only have about an hour tonight, so um, we ain't got no time for riff raff. We're gonna handle our shit and move along. Um, yeah. So um, what do we do first, we want to talk about lights out. We want to talk about pro. We want to talk about Super Bowl. What do we want to talk about? How long do you think you can contain this site? Your excitement if we talk about something else first. Or do you think, do you, like, will you get more agitated as we go? Because I may do that. Or do you think you would be happier if we talked about something else first? I can wait. Whatever you're the most miserable with. Patient, patient gal. I can wait. Okay. Do what you need to do, and then I'll finish it out. I don't need to do anything. I'm good. I'm just coming to bullshit with my buddies. But we do have this Shake and Bake Express. I have a long night ahead of me. We are going to fire up our NHRA car tomorrow in Florida, and I got to get down there. And I'm now truck driver Steve. Uh, on a couple of the rigs, so it's good. But lights out coming up this week. Donald Long has done an unprecedented amount of promotion going into this event. Um, have you guys ever seen an event so gust gustofully promoted? I mean, the one uh, that I just yeah, the pro race. The pro race was was pretty. It was up. There. I was sick of hearing about the pro race, and I'm more proud of that than anything I've ever done. But I think that Donald. I think this one is good, and I'll be the one to say it in this room that I think that you coming back there has a lot to do with it because Donald loves that about it, and I think that it's good for the race. I think it's good for the the sport. Um, also, it's the kind of first big one of the year. Everybody's rejuvenated, but um, I'm not going to be there. So, you know. That's because you're scared of witness greatness. No, it's because I'm fucking tired. <laughs> also, also, you're not going at all. No. I'm off. I'm not traveling until World Series of Promod. Don's going. Hmm. Oh, the man, Don O'Neill. Don O'Neill, not to be um, confused with the late model or whatever roundy round driver is Don O'Neill that all the flow people were talking about all weekend. Um, so everybody's asking in the comments about testing. So we got the car fired up literally at Orangeburg. We had a little bit of ignition snafu. Got her fired up. We made the first poke at Smoke the Tires, which on a brand new combination is expected. Second one, I ran to the 330, uh, and it had an ignition snafu again. It left starting line and like kind of shut off, and then went 108, 60 foot, and took off, and then ran kind of okay. Uh, nothing to be said about, but we hauled it back home. It's a brand new engine combination for KTR, so it's kind of the, the mule to kind of see, so I wanted to get it apart, see how everything looked, um, and... All together, it was pretty good. I mean, it felt weird being back in the car, but this thing fits me like a glove, and it drives like a Cadillac. I mean, I never – you ever got a car and, like, the steering wheel straight when you get it? You don't have to, like – it's nice. Like, you, you just take it down the track, and it runs good. So, it was good. Uh, but that's that was testing. Nothing to brag about. Nothing exciting. I think it went 432 at 135. I don't even know what to do when I get in a race car that the steering wheel is not at like 11 o'clock. I know you're like, ah. like if, I, if I get in one that's straight, I'm like, this thing is not. <laughs> it's not wrong. Just, that's because y'all are crazy. Huh? Because y'all are crazy. What do you mean? Getting in without it being straight, I'm out. I want to thank man. everybody that has bought merch, KTR, uh, Shadow merch, Slogan merch, everything in the last Easy. couple of weeks. 
I saw at least eight or 10 and I had at least four or five people come up to me like, tell Stevie, I'm repping this shit at the pro race. Like I saw it. You were, you were there. Yeah. I appreciate all you guys supporting us. That's a shot in the arm that you guys want to wear our stuff. And I really appreciate all of you. Courtney, tell them about when you were on stage. Uh, I saw it. I was watching. Um, I was watching. I heard the shaking and baking. The Who said that? Who that? There. I wasn't even supposed to do that. Wes Buck handed me the microphone about 14 seconds before that started. We had no plan. I get up there and I introduce myself and there's, I don't know how many people were there, but it was a lot. Like I, I can talk in front of a camera, but a crowd's one thing. And I, as soon as I said my name, some drunk guy goes, shake and bake. And I just repeated it. I was like, shake and bake. It, it was, was everywhere. It's probably me. No, it was, it was, it was um, someone else for sure. But even when Erica won, we were driving back everywhere. She looked at me 15, 20 times this weekend, like shake and bake's all people care about. Yeah. That's all people care about. Pedro, uh, we're coming back to Grudge Race on Friday night at Lights Out 15. We're locked in with the war chicken. Probably not a good idea, not having the frame rails in the car when we locked that race in, but got a couple of days to get her up to speed. I wouldn't bet against that shut up. So give me 20 on that shut up. Yeah. We got some exciting stuff coming for everybody that's Lights Out. If you are at Lights Out, come by our pits. There's going to be some some fun faces around and there's going to be all of our merch line will be there and we will uh, be having fun. It's going to be exciting. Wow. What are you going to be doing at lights out? Uh, be locking the world. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be driving anything yet. I've got the potential opportunity to drive a no time car. Um, it's just depending on whether or not I can, we can get everything together. But uh, other than that, I will just be doing the bead locking. What up? Can it all? In the cannonball. He's forever a shake and bake legend. Like you can't, you can't. That is a legend, legend. So when you're a legend, legend, you can be a legend of all other things. But that's the greatest show we've ever had. It was pretty great. Period. But again, sometimes if I'm having a bad day, I'll watch Scotty Cannon show. Yeah. Um, we uh we got so RVW is going to be hot. Uh, a lot of new faces coming to run that class. A lot of folks scared to come. We have Pro Two Seventy Five. Lots of controversy there going on uh ldr big swing in the rules for this race pro charger guys got nailed uh weight off the nitrous cars weight off the roots cars ldr would be fun to watch what else what other kind of hotness is going on for lights out before we get into the pr ho race pr ho <laughs> the pr oh that's pr o. um be luck in the world or be I luck in the world this will be one of the biggest turnout lights out 15 lights out. Well, why why do you say that? Because of Donald's relentless promotion. Okay. Like, and, and it's not that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of faces, not just me that are coming back and running radial uh, here. There's new cars coming. There's animosity. There's locked in grudge races. Uh, and plus the February race is always special. Like the weather's good. Normally it doesn't rain a lot. Well, Nate, Nate just said, um, Oh, where did it go? The, Largest pre-registered field at Lights Out. Well, that's what I was going to say. You never, never know if Donald's telling the truth when he says that stuff. But well, that's the beauty of Donald is it doesn't matter if he's telling the truth. It works. But the streetcar bragging rights class, Nate Prater, uh, yep, yep. I think they had 28 tech cards sold like in the day the open dude, registration. Nate's that, which, hot in the promoter world. He's that dude does a good job. Does a great job. Like last Thursday night when we were trying to go run that thing on Friday at Orangeburg, like Nate and his guys were at my shop until the middle of the night, decaling the car. Like there's our CSRA race mafia going on over here. So thanks to those guys. Um, give me on that chat too. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't registered. Do I need to register for lights out? How do you do that? I feel like right. that you don't do it right now because Donald's going to just, Destroy the internet. Steve has that can register for radio versus the world. You gonna buy an open comp test te tech card too? Te 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 do not do that. You will not see me an open comp. I would rather just lose. I don't enter any other class. I'm in the premier radio class, and that's where I need to be. Okay. One thing we're not worried about is I don't want to hear no crying. Everybody's been crying before about all the LDR cars and Pro 275 cars and all them entering the RVW field, coming over there and taking out the radio versus the world cars in round one. I don't give a shit about any of that. Like, I want to run one of them guys in, in E1 so I can get a duck. 
Mm, yeah, Stevie Buck got ducked by a leaf spring car one time. Tell him. <laughs> hey, he was out there for a long time. <laughs> I smoked the tires. Lyle's gone. I'm trying to gather that piece of crap up. I barely snuck around him. <laughs> um, I have a question. You just said the word crap. Do you have a cocktail? Me? Yeah. I'm drinking. This is all Red Bull on ice. Okay. I could tell because you said crap. Did I? Yeah, instead of like shit or something, you oh, should. Yeah. Yeah, so you no, know, I'm so. not cocktailing. I have to work all night and uh, will not. Am I the only one having a cocktail? Wow, my man. Yeah. Dangers. Dangers. All right, so RBW coming up. Lights out. Fifteen is on the hunt. Right behind that, we got World Series of Pro Mod. Uh, can which, we get Can we get some predictions uh, in in the uh, in the the leading classes at Lights Out? We'll start. Uh, yeah. Let's start at Ultra Street. God, you don't know anything about Ultra Street. Yeah. Um, mm. I'm gonna take my man Brian Keep. I would like to say Kiefer Simpson, but um, I would take one of the two. God, Kiefer's car is running good. I'm gonna take my man Brian Keep. Ultra Street. Wait, Spencer. Y'all don't know anybody. Jesus Christ. I don't. I don't. Take Stevie. Take Jack Stan Jimmy. Oh yeah, yeah I like Jack. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Jack Stan Jimmy. I didn't take him because I figured you would. Yeah. No, I mean, Jimmy. Courtney, take Kiefer. I like Kiefer. I know. I take Keith Simpson. I'll take him. Okay. Uh, X 275. I'm going back to back with my diesel brother, Ryan Milliken. Tell me who to pick. I don't even know. Not Kenny Hubbard anymore because he's gone. I, that's one of the only ones I know is Kenny Hubbard. Um, the McCain boys aren't going. Oh, they're not? No. I do like the McCain boys. They're cool. Jesus. That was the first time I met them. My first race doing right. with Flo was Lights Out, actually. So this is my this is my anniversary with Flo. First person to put a comment for me to pick in the comments is who I'm going to take for X275. Is Rhodes in there? Uh, Rhodes, yep. Uh, Rhodes, Rhodes is in. I was oh, yeah. say probably Rhodes. Um, we got Oh, Rhodes. yeah. Um, Courtney, take White Rice. Okay. Jesus. Limited Drag Radial? LDR Ted Henderson, baby, the Buick, coming off of his personal best, 392 at 186 miles an hour, taking the G-body. I'm going to take my teammate, Scott Tidwell. No chance. Paul Gargis. We already crushed him. He's Paul Gargis. Paul Gargis. He already got know. Scott Tidwell owned. I said Paul Gargis. Okay, I was going to say, if you don't. He already been gapped. Taking my man. Has been. Watch okay. that. <laughs> right. <laughs> they crushed me. Chad just beat them. I'm going to be watching. I'll tell you, usually at big events. Hey, instead like of Paul picking Mo, your nose, how about you pick an LDR guy? Yeah. Wow. Pick some more LDR. a really good weekend last week or a couple weekends ago, and you're going to come in hot like that. We spent a lot of time together. It's, it's just because I know, I know that Spencer is in the area and that – He left. I, he went to go pick up food. I have to – when when we're when we're on the same page, I want to know who's wearing the pants in that deal. Let's be real. <laughs> I just the people want to know. The people every, don't want to know. In every deal, somebody's got the fuzzy nuts. I want to know who's got the fuzzy nuts. This one, nuts. this one, right? That one right there. Well, I would like to think that in different areas of life, people hold the fucking candle, and it just depends on what you're doing. But I am an aggressive human, so. <laughs> To say the least. It takes a moving, very, um, moving on. Moving forward, have you seen the original Men in Black where some people are in New York City that may not be um, humans? You could be from Men in Black. You might Clay. be Clay. <laughs> Clay's coming. Yes, a hundred percent. Oh no, not true. All right, now that we know who's pitching and catching, Pro Two Seventy Five. Wait a minute, she ain't picked LDR. Do not pick Goss because that he ain't got I, no chance. Pick I'll be honest, guys. I don't I don't like to speak on things I don't know enough about, and I don't. So I take y'all's judgment here. So I'm just a spectator for this. I don't know enough. Take Jamie Hancock. Okay. I trust you. I'll take Jamie Hancock. Yeah, he runs good. He's been hauling ass. He's good. Okay. Pro 275. Brian McGee. Ethan says Brian McGee. I saw a couple of Brian McGee's. Yeah, Brian McGee ran good. Went yeah. 71 in the final last race. I was pulling for that Nitros car. Yeah. I'm going to go the obvious pick my other teammate. Scott Tidwell on Jason Collins. Oh, okay. Okay. Mark, uh -huh. he don't lose much. 
He don't. They did smoke that thing in the final. And he talked a lot of shit to me. I forgot about that. I need to go tune a Pro 275 car. If you got a Pro 275 car, it's not a piece of shit, and you want to outrun Jason Collins, Scott Tidwell, call me. Bert, I'm seeing a lot of Bert, a lot of Mohawk. All right, radio versus, radio versus the world. Do Steve not pick me because I have minimal chance here with the best, with a just, just cranked up bandit. All this shit y'all been fucking talking on the internet. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. But I'm saying it'd be foolish to pick me against a field, and I went 432 on testing. Uh, okay, if you say don't pick you, I'm going to – is Luis Adeleon running the – Luis Adeleon. They're bringing a screwball. So they're going to have the same shit I got. And yeah. or or they're bringing just a screwblower. I don't know. I just know that he he's not in the nitrous car. Mm. I don't know. I know they're bringing a who charger. Is oh, Jason yeah, Lee, is Jason Lee running job. RVW? Victor did a good job at US Street with that final oh. entry list. I wish we really had an official final entry list. I know there's one up there, but oh hello. hello. Thanks for watching Jack Mother. last week. She she held down the fort while I was at Pro. Norman Bryson. Oh, Norman Bryson. I do like Norman Bryson. He's a nice guy. Y'all can pick the shadow. I'm picking the shadow. I mean, I, I'm going to pick the shadow to win. I'm Stevie just saying. Fan, this. I'm a Stevie Fast fan. I'll pick you. Yeah, I just, man, I think you got enough time to get it running. I'm here for a story. I say this all the time. Stories win in drag racing. And I think, like, we'll talk about in a minute, Austin Proc, that stuff. I'm here for a story. I'm I'm in on Stevie Fast. For I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick the war chicken. Oh. Oh my gosh, that will not happen. But I will tell you this, and this is one good thing that comes from testing. You're you always nervous in a new car. You ain't drove one in a while. This one's all mine, so it's a whole different deal. Like because when it blows up, I got to pay for it all. I was 018 on the first rip, and then the second rip, I was 018. You'll be all right. So I don't know if it's going to keep. Tell you what I won't. Food, I can tell you what I won't bet against. No matter what's going on, is Stevie Fast Jackson. So. <laughs> He may not. You may think all the things, but uh, I'm not going to bet against you. I think you'll be all right. Uh, Michael. I saw that. Right. He was at the pro race this weekend. He came up and saw me. Couldn't okay. say away. All right. I think that's, I think that's ready? radial terror racing. Oh, do we want to talk about World Series of Pro Mod before we get into the pro race? Because the pro race is going to dominate most of the well, show. We can talk about that in a minute when the old reigning champ comes back, if you'd like. Yeah, and I have a sponsorship Henry. announcement for that. So, oh, you okay. Do? Okay. all right, let's talk about the pro race. Did anybody see the pro race that happened this week? Well, I sure did, and I, I had. Was say. And I, I've always said that I think it's ridiculous that adults have FOMO, but I had it that I wasn't. It there. was. I'm not saying this because of the effort I put into it. I'm not saying it because of everything that everyone I have to do with put all their eggs in this basket. But I have never ever been to a place that had a vibe like that. I'm not saying it was the most exciting or the coolest or this. It was just flat freaking different. Well, and one thing I want to say about that for the first time, and look, I run in the NHRA. I have run in the NHRA for the first time at the professional level, which includes top fuel and funny car and pro stock. The focus was on entertainment. It right. was like, and I'm not saying they were not focused on the racing because the racing was for real. Was the teams great. were serious, but for once the the focus was on the big picture and the entertainment and less about dollars and cents. In my opinion, I know it was for the big purse, but for once well, we when I was watching it, it was like big stages for VIP bars in the vip area you know like it was just it, it just looked like something that was put on for the fans and the racers got to enjoy themselves and i thought it was just fucking unbelievable so we get there obviously all of us y'all know i've been a stressed out disaster the last nine months dealing with this but the main thing that i was worried about aside from the stream which we're going to talk about that in a minute if you made it on flow all the things like you watched this weekend you can shut up it was phenomenal. We had the jibs. We had live timing, which we're going to have at different races this year now. Uh, we were able to access and pay for that live timing. That was a big announcement we had coming into that. You're going to see it at World Series of Pro Mod. I think we're going to have it at uh, Lights Out as well for the pro classes. Big, big changes there. But one of the coolest things that I thought, and I don't think that you can understand this without being there, was I went around doing all these interviews and I'm talking to 
crew chiefs. I'm talking to team owners. I'm talking to Lanny, track specialists. I'm talking to crew guys, like just getting people's opinion. Like, are y'all having fun? What do you think of your pit space? Because it was tight. Like everybody wants to bitch about what was going on in Bradenton with pit space. Every pro was on solid ground. We had none of them in there. The second the grass ended was where it ended, but it was condensed and the crew guys and the, the team owners and even Sean Langdon, he's not my biggest fan in the world, came up to me and, and talked for probably five, eight minutes and said how much fun his guys were having on yeah. Saturday. We ran three qualifiers. You think they'd be drained to the end of it. They got to have lunch. They got to sit down the way that we structured this event catered to the people that were working it. And yeah. I think that that's something that's major. That's never happened. We cater it to the people that consume events and we catered this event to those who run it and it, correlated and it translated well to the people who consume it because you could tell that the people were energized. These crew guys were having a blast. Even Ron Caps didn't qualify for this deal, which is freaking nuts. Talked to Guido on the starting line of that Chicago style race. I said, be honest, do you wish you wouldn't have come because you didn't qualify and you could have gone testing somewhere else and done something different? Hand on the Bible quote, looked at me, said, fuck no, this was awesome. Yeah. Like, it was just something completely and utterly different. You're out there testing, you're throwing stuff to the wind. And something Guido said was we were trying things for Gainesville and we were already committed to this change. So by Q3 and Q4, we couldn't go back and just race for this racetrack. Right. We had to continue what our mission was here. And then if we got lucky and got in, that's what happened. But it was, I think it was as well received as anything that's that's been done in a really long time. Maybe it's because it was different. Uh, maybe it's because it was fun. Maybe it's because it was big money. I don't know. But the vibe in that place, Clay is in the comments, can attest to this. Like, I've never seen anything like that. And it was just, it was absolutely fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I was super impressed. You know, the, and you can go back to them allowing Cletus to run side by side with, so cool. with Clay, you know, and like great for the YouTube fans and whatnot that maybe had no idea that that was going on. And, you know, and, and I saw the comment, I think Stevie, you may have shared it, but, or I read it on my phone here, but you know, the, with the development going on around that racetrack, Doug Cook made a post over, over the weekend. He's eight miles from the track. Um, and he could sit out on his, in his screen porch and could hear the race cars going down the racetrack, you know, and for Doug, that's cool. Right. But for his 85 year old neighbor, not probably cool. not cool. Right. You know, so showing the town of Bradenton or the city of Bradenton, whatever you want to call it, you know, that four miles of traffic backed up to get into that place and a packed house and all the money and the revenue it brought to, to them. I hope that that was proof if nothing else that the place needs to stay, because I don't, if those of you in the comments, if you haven't been to Bradenton in the past year or well, That's better yet in the past six months, experience. it's different now than it was like I went in December right at, to the snowbirds when i came back in january it looked different you know like there is so much development right on top of that racetrack and you know and i just hope that this alone and with the world series of pro world series of pro mod coming up they've got what streetcar takeover in between this weekend like there's three or four big weekends for that racetrack coming up right now and i hope that that is proof that no matter what's going on around there, the place needs to stay because it does. It's, Victor was getting videos cool. all weekend of people at the golf course with the brah, brah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, but, but that's how we need to be. Like people want to push it out and I understand, but the track's been there. These houses haven't I'm not trying to get political here, but like, I don't want to move next to an airport. Why the hell am I going to move next to a racetrack? Like right. show your dominance, the way that this track was set up with that double decker VIP right next to the road Every tree lining the fence had colored lights on it. That place looked, I don't care who you were. When you drove past that place, you go, what's going on there? Like, yeah, let, let me stop real quick. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. stop and pull on in that unit. Yeah, it was, We had people across the street, like we do in Redding, on top of their trucks, yeah. trying to look in. Outside of Erica's pit, we were right there on the fence. There were guys in Harleys, like hanging on the fence. And on Friday, Thursday night, I'm sorry, Thursday, we were supposed to open the gates at two or 3 p.m. I can't remember. We had to open it an hour early because people were climbing the fence to get in. I am not exaggerating. They were going absolutely berserk and we were worried about selling tickets. Like we figured we'd sell subscriptions, uh, but there was a lot of variables in this thing and we were really, really worried about packing that place. And if you saw pictures from it, it was absolutely out of control. But um, 
I want to talk about one big thing. Matt, I won't, I won't need you to get ready for this. I don't know where you're at in the chat. Fuck. There's been something going on and brewing within the shake and bake community of who was going to get in a nitro car and warm it up first. I won, motherfuckers. You have no real job. You can go do that stuff. But the beauty of it is, happen. this is my real job, and y'all just mad about it, and I want to watch the video. I mean... I want to watch Oh, you got some narrow hips, boy. Hey, I'm Courtney Enders, and I'm about to warm up Justin Ashley's top fuel dragster. What? When, they, when you start to hear it, like, turn over, blah, blah, like, tell me. turn the fuel on. All the way. All you do, turn it's it on. Easy. It's easy. What happens worry, if it, like, it inches forward a little? It's okay. Okay. Okay, put on the clutch, hand on the brake. Okay, I'm going to tell you when to turn the fuel on. We're going to start it, okay? And that's all you have to do. Just put on the clutch, hand on the brake. <laughs> oh my god! This is absolutely insane. I can see it in my stomach. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, I don't think I'm a press that there anymore. Thank you for letting me do that. That was so sick. Thank y'all. Okay, so my heart rate just went from 71 to 171, and I was sitting down in there. If that doesn't get your wiener hard, I don't know. That's pretty it's funny. Like my wiener hard, and I don't have a wiener. That is badass. It That's was badass. like sitting there. I've done a lot of cool shit in my life and I'm sitting there and it's all happening. And I'm like, okay, this is really cool. And I had to stop for a second because my ass was shaking. I could smell nitro and I had Tommy DeLago, Mike Green, Justin Ashley, Mike Ashley, like right in front of me. And it was one of those moments where you have to slow it down for yourself and be like, who the fuck allowed you to do this? <laughs> absolutely insane but i'll tell you what shaken bakers it had a lot to do with this because i had more people even the crew guys in that pit as we were doing it they were like you won you won the shake and bake bet like you didn't win i did win i warmed up a top fuel car before you did but it doesn't matter you didn't since all this happened and we said it i warmed up the greeks car in gainesville 2017 you lost you got gapped stevie whatever but, you can say darling it was cool. It was cool, and I'm sure it was. But since we've started this deal, we all I'm say saying it. yours was cool. Also, my video guy was pretty sick, so I don't know if you had a, a video that sick. But that was cool. Seriously, one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. I got out of it. I had my video guy not put it in there, but I said, I don't think I'm a pro stock bitch anymore. <laughs> you, could, you said it at the end. Oh, yep. he's seen that video? I didn't even hear it. Yeah. Well, I told him not to put it. Once you go bone alcohol, it's really hard to go do anything else. I've never felt anything like that. I know it's a whole nother level. Yeah, that yeah. shit's unbelievable. That was fucking cool. Like, Speaking, I'm not a hater. Who said I'm, I'm not a hater? I told her that's badass. I think it's great. I'm jealous. Jealous. Jealous is in my heart. Uh, oh, we were talking about Bradenton earlier and uh, the houses moving in and all that stuff. The main thing that I see different with Bradenton over the past administrations is Bradenton Motorsports Park is being ran by passionate individuals. Mm -hmm. Any company that you see that is ran by passionate individuals succeeds and flourishes. Look at Motion Raceworks. Look at Bradenton Motorsports Park. Look at all these companies that do not count beans. When you have a passion-based business like motorsports and you get private equity groups and bean counters involved, you do not have the success that Bradenton Motorsports Park is having. So Victor and his guys are doing a great job and, uh, I love it when people win at our sport. Yeah. yeah, it was a big win. So let's talk about the winners then. Clay Milliken, I know you're in here, man. God. I was, man, I was, I was Dude. like, Dude. Me too, man. <laughs> I thought it you were like, getting it. And I thought everything that happened was really cool, but like they had Milliken glasses. His sister and wife had those glasses out there. His energy was just absolutely electric, but. Um, I think I think he can honestly say, even though he didn't win the race, that that race was a win for Clay Milliken. 
I, I, I think Clay's team has turned a corner, and they've been running good for a long time. They're going to be racing for a championship this year. Heard it here. Yeah. And they choke first. That's a, that race with him and Cletus was actually – I was kind of skeptical about it. He told me about it, and we're going to film it. I was a little skeptical, but I loved the way he just sat there and waited and then and passed him. One of my favorite deals was a comment was like, when you get ta uh, passed by the next tax bracket. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know that – I mean, we've – especially us three – have seen those cars go up and down the racetrack time and time and time again and heard them and been at the top end and watched them from the starting line. But to put in perspective when, you know, Cletus wasn't in a slow race car, you know, like that thing's not slow. I mean, for, you know, for just a, a street driven car and to see Clay's car come by it puts in, puts into perspective how freaking fast that thing is, you know, I'm like, it shut his car off. Right. You know, like, dude, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Then, speaking of that, then we had the 341 run from Tasca. Yeah, we got a bunch of comments about that. I don't know enough about the tech process, but let me address Steady Eddie here. I've never been beat by that car. Like, you can't call being lined up and qualifying one time or a test run smoking <laughs> tires in there first. Bitch ain't never bet no money and won a pot. Um, so, lots of, lots of comments about was Tasca legal. What is your opinion on that? How do you what do you have to say that? My opinion is if you go to uh, flowracing.com and type that in there, we uh, we did a video on that. We talked about the timing system and why it is legal and why Victor spent all the money that he did going into. No, no, no. that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about whether the clocks were accurate. I'm talking about was it illegal? Uh, what is the funny car in HRA legal? Yes, yeah, the R tech step was NHRA tech. Yes, everything was NHRA spec. The timing system was CompuLink. Everything was absolutely legit. Now, I don't know what it's going to be called. See, there's Clay. We actually had to tech at this race. It was 100% NHRA ready to go. I don't know what's going to happen when one of them does it here in the next few races at an NHRA race. What they're going to say, I think they're going to act like this race didn't exist. They're going to call it the um, first run in the 340s, which is fine, all the things. But there were enough eyeballs to know what happened. But it was 1,000% legitimate. I don't no, my question wasn't on the timing system at all. It was I didn't know up until Clay's yeah, time it was an actual legal yep. legal um all of our tech was NHRA tech just because they we use this as a test as a uh, test session. That's how we lured them in there. Like that thing's fucking fast, man. They've been fast though, they've been running good. 340.2. Like, yeah, 341.8. And he legged it on down through there a little bit just to make sure it got there. Yeah. <laughs> Like he didn't, he he didn't shut off at a thousand foot. There's a video of him. I don't know who posted it getting out of the car when he found out what he I did. It. it was great. Like, holy shit. That was, that was really cool. I think that even if whatever it's named going forward, we all saw, we all know what happened for the fact that that to happen at Bradenton. I think that's a big win for that. Kurt Johnson and the track prep team that came in there. Awesome. John Sears and the tech program. Awesome deal for that. I think that was a win all around for everything outside of NHRA. Yeah. I was curious about that, that comment. The Which, comment? About, the, about the header deal. Yeah. Just if I that, if that was. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. I saw somebody ask if we got banned from Cletus. We actually did not. We talked to Cletus about that when we were, what? Oh, at um, at the U.S. Streets, and we're not banned. We just have to make sure we both have time and are set and ready to go. And he said we could come back. So and he probably wants us to replace the two cars we totaled out last time. Uh, yeah, no, that's <laughs> not going to happen. Well, I, um, uh, because all of drag racing, if you're racing for the purse, is not worth it. <laughs> like that 250000 they were running for this weekend, still not worth it. So no person drag racing is what lures me to drag race. I like to go and hang out with the fans and uh, race against hot rod race cars. Yeah, the, the money was a big thing there this weekend. But if you, and I may get shit on, on my end of the world for this, but winner take all, X amount of dollars sounds bigger than when they trickle it down all the way to first round. So if you trickle down what NHRA pays, it's going to be about the same. 
for a full class payout, but the fact that it was winner take all, it sounded and looked bigger, which it was. But like you just said, people didn't go there for that. It was big money. They want to do it. It's it creates a different motive, but there was a lot of other different motives to why all those teams showed up. I don't know what this comment is. I guess they're talking about the race, maybe. I don't know. I um I gave Matt each of them's only like a minute long. I think this will help like expedite, but it, what my guy at Flow did was really cool. I gave Matt a couple of videos. I don't know if you're in the private chat, Matt. If for Top Fuel, we we did a deal with Doug Coletta, which I thought was really cool for Doug because I know it's kind of a hometown-ish deal for him. I know him and Scott used to race there when they were younger. Um, but I don't know. Again, I'm leading blind here. But if you guys want to watch this little minute video I have of the Top Fuel winner, we can do one of each class. That's not. I don't think that's the fastest um, drag car. I think it's the fastest piston powered. Yeah. One ever. Like I, don't, I think it surpasses drag cars. Anyways, let's see if we got that video. Look. Oh, that's fast. Just a couple of weeks awesome, for baby. three days that we'll live for the Dougie Coletta, man. In the winner's circle here at the Pro Superstar Shootout with the champ, yeah. Doug Coletta, a living legend. Your momentum has not faltered from Pomona. This has got to be a big one on your illustrious career. Yeah, absolutely. We got Alan. We got all my guys behind me. So, uh, yeah, just couldn't do it without them. I mean, it's uh, it's been a great uh, momentum builder, and, you know, we're looking forward to getting the season started. But, uh you know, Connie and uh, I'm sure Don Schumacher would be so proud of the pro effort that was put together here to make everything happen. And, uh, you know, just happy to win it, man. It's uh, it's pretty cool. You know, and a ton of fans. You know, it was really an exciting day. So everybody was, I think, had a good time. You could have done a million things with how you start this season with testing and everything else that may have been a little more productive. But to come here to shake off the, the dust, get all the bugs worked out, and walk away with a quarter million dollars. I know you boys are excited. Yeah, this is a good format. Hopefully, uh, we can keep this going because uh, you got to test somewhere, and then we might as well race. So, uh, but yeah, flow racing. Uh, you know, I watch all the sprint car stuff as much as I can anyway. So, wanted to thank those guys for you know being out here and supporting this thing because uh, it meant a lot to us. Well, it means a lot to me to be able to interview you here and introduce you as the top field champion at the inaugural Pro Superstar Shootout. Great job, Alan. Boys, congratulations. Very cool. Man, look at how fired up everybody is. That is awesome. I wanted to be there. I had to work. But I wish have, I do we have all the videos? I've got I've got all three for um, the pro classes and and we'll I know Good. we've got Scoot and Boo tonight but Funny Car pretty awesome itself too. I feel like awesome. a lot of people wanted John Force to win just this old school shootout yeah. style race. Awesome Proc takes him out legitimately his very first race in a Funny Car. That was one of the coolest things of the whole weekend for me. I had like 187 pinch me moments and one of them was in this video you're about to see where i got to introduce austin as the funny car winner like no one's ever done that before to go out with your dad that, and then your brother working on it and yeah, win that that's freaking cool and that dude's a freaking race car driver that's a race car driver i'm going right there that's some bitch can drive there's no team orders at force racing no and i asked him on thursday i said how's it going what do you think and he said and he hadn't made a clean run yet and he goes i thought i was a race car driver till now I'm a race car driver now that I've driven this funny car. Like, and he's driven everything and anything. And for somebody to say that, like, it was it was so cool to watch. I said it earlier in the show. Drag racing is a a game of storybook shit. And what Austin Proc did this weekend was fucking storybook. When uh when I was licensing in Randy Myers' uh, a fuel car in Vegas, Robert Height and Austin Proc walked up on either side of the canopy or the cockpit. When I was I was in it. And Robert's like, so you're telling me that you get out of a pro mod and getting a dragster. And I was like, what, man? He was like, stop being a pussy and getting a funny car. <laughs> I was like, God damn, man. <laughs> All right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol funny car. I was like, God, <laughs> drive this son of a bitch. It was cool. It's one of the coolest cars. Oh, Sean, Sean Bellamere has told me time and time again, he was like, whenever you want to become a man, <laughs> you let me know and come get in my alcohol funny car. I said you can drive it anywhere you want to on this racetrack. Just keep the pedal to the floorboard. Boss, awesome. right. man, now. 
All right. Oh yeah, hundred percent. They must awesome. not have seen right. Cletus and Cletus is great crown pick race. I think we got uh, his video too. circle with what I get to be so proud to say for the very first time Austin Proc your funny car winner here at the Pro Superstar Shootout Austin man did you ever think anyone would say those words to you no uh, it was a dream come true today uh, racing with my family my dad and my brother on the knobs with Nate at all and uh, this whole Cornwell tool uh, Chevy Camaro SS uh, dream come true and uh, just proud to be behind the wheel and and uh, get it done for him you know this car is a race winning car and uh, they threw me in the seat and it did just the same thing as Robert Hyde so, uh, great day. Started off as a rock ring game, but you came into your name. Brock Rocket himself, Austin Brock, your funny car winner. That right there is. You don't get excited watching that. Badass. It's true joy right there. I want to have some true joy. Mm -hmm. You're going to. Uh, that was that was so cool, and, and I've seen people talk about Paul Lee going in the strawberry fields in the sand. There was a lot more action than than um, just the winners, but man, you you can't take away with what no. from what happened there. That was absolutely freaking epic. Yeah. And then awesome. there's only one more class, and I feel like I don't need to talk about it. What happened there? To be expected. Well, we was out of the field. We was we didn't really do oh. very well. And then, uh, new shit or rust? No, it was, we were just testing. I mean, there was some shit going on. It was right lane, left lane kind of stuff. And then the last qualifier, it's funny. We, we weren't in the show after Thursday night and then kind of barely inched in there. I think like 12 or 13. And, uh, at the last qualifier, Mark Ingersoll said, if this thing makes it to the Christmas tree, we're going to the top. So they were not lollygagging around. They were shooting for it. And, uh, Bitch went to the top and then bitch went all the way. It's because she's a fucking goat. Listen, there was a lot of there was a lot of um, personal, emotional vendettas in this deal. Uh, people kind of thought there was favoritism. There was which there wasn't. Richard had a lot to do with this race, so it seems a way. But you cannot favoritism qualifying with NHRA rules of switching lanes. You cannot favorite chip draws. And you cannot favor it just flat out driving. So maybe I'm just biased because I'm her sister, but I watched the whole thing. I would have been super happy if Aaron, Jeggy, even Chris, I love that Chris went far. I love that Dave was going far coming back. I thought that would have been a cool story. Yeah. Him coming back, winning that deal would have been really similar to Austin Proc, but uh, we're red. Can't fuck with it. Can't fuck with it. And there was so many people – on that starting line, what I thought was really cool was we kept things pretty um, procedural. Like, they made sure people had their credentials. You couldn't be on the starting line if you were a part of another team. Once the finals came around, though, like, we wanted it to be a really emotional scene. And I think this video that we've got of her shows it. But it was – I've been a part of now 49 um, celebrations on the starting line with her. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confidently go down and say I've never enjoyed one more. Ever. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Matt. You got it. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. 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 Erica Enders here, the Pro Stop winner at the Stag Superstar Shootout by JHG. Erica Enders, this is one of the most electric vibe races we've ever seen. Your sponsors were on board with this. Your team helped plan it. Thank you. How incredible for you to walk away with that trophy. Uh, man, it's, it's more meaningful than most people will ever comprehend. Um, this uh, this entire event was just worked on so hard by so many people, the entire team at Pro, the entire team at Flow, um, and to have our biggest partners, Skag and JHG, jump in head first. Um, from the time we rolled in the gate here, the feeling was different. I've won a lot of races in my life, but towing back the return road, the, the fan response was absolutely unparalleled to anything that I've ever done. So the energy here is electric and... <laughs> Obviously, by this winter circle, my new race car got broken just right. So I'm uh, I'm thrilled for our entire organization. And that final round was, uh, like I said, extremely meaningful to me. I've been waiting a long time to do that. And uh, my guys are stoked, and I'm stoked. And we parked the Smelling Performance JHG Skag 
all my sponsors uh, that make this happen, High Performance Lubricants, um, it means a lot to me, Court, as you know. So, What kind of statement, just a quick couple of words, the statement that this race makes on the drag racing community? Well, like I said in my top end interview, I think it turns the wind light on for drag racing worldwide. I think it goes to show you that a group of people with a common passion and a common goal, uh, when they work together and swim in the same direction, the entire universe is possible. So I think this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you're about to see from this group. But uh, not a fan of the word epic, but this deal was freaking epic, and I'm so proud of it. I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm thankful to Flo for streaming it, for you for doing all the hard work behind the scenes. And uh, uh oh. <laughs> I've tried to get away from it. My sister, I am proud to say the pro stock winner of the pro superstar shootout. Pro on flow, baby. Pro on flow. Woo! I so good. That was manufactured. That was I will say, joy. I have had some fire suits ruined with champagne, and it's always okay. A hundred percent. Yeah. You just call, call them up and order another one. Right. Yeah. That's badass. No problem. So the casual fan and even the people that are involved in this deal in depth get to see the production. We all know there was a lot of work going on behind the scenes. When we were in, when we were in Florida running U S street, there were already people on the ground that were starting the day after U S street, putting this deal together, meaning all the, the stuff everybody sees. How many hours went into putting on that race? And I'm not talking about on the West Bucks. I'm talking about in your what you know about in flow. How many hours went on to doing that? Ten months of solid. I'm not exaggerating when I say that the last you want to say ten. We planned it ten months ago. The last six months of my life, I have lived, breathed, bled, shit, slept, everything. Pro superstar shootout. I've never put anything like more effort into something more tirelessly, more self selflessly, all of it than I have this. And um, there was a big risk with it. Hi, Kevin. There was a big risk with it in a lot of sense. We tried a lot of new things with the production. We tried a lot of new things on site. Um, we had no idea what we were doing driver intro wise, anything like pageantry wise. But the people, and I know people have said this, the people that were involved in this from the pro board to myself and Tom Bobaltz at Flow and Joe Baker at Flow. Mark Floriani from Flow, like literally Mark Flow of Flow, came to this event. He doesn't go to events and he'd never been to a drag race, wanted to come out. Michael Rigsby came out, Derek Kessinger. We had a couple of late model guys come out from um, Speed Week up in Brandon, Florida. The amount of time, money, effort, and attention that went into this on so many levels could have just gone. <sighs> if things didn't go away, if it rained or if people didn't come or if the timing system didn't work with our deal or if the graphics package wasn't great or if our jib guy didn't do well. Like Jamie Howell, exactly, J.O. And she was absolutely incredible telling the story of this event. But there's a lot of things underneath the surface that as critics and as the people that have been involved in this from day one, we have a lot of shit we want to change. But I think to the fan and even to the racer that went there, they don't even notice it. And we're being just overly critical of it because I can't, as, as I came, I drove home back to the Airbnb the other night and I got emotional because I said five years ago, I wanted to get a hard card. And now I'm interviewing Doug Coletta in the freaking winner's circle. Like what the shit at a pro race, it's not sanctioned by NHRA. We had some NHRA guys there. Ned Walser came out there. Like we had some guys there. It wasn't as segregated as people think people wanted to know what we were doing people wanted to watch what we were doing it was a massive success and i think that it's not as much of a coup and this like narrative of we want to beat somebody as people think that what we did here proved that we can make it different but we can work together and if they will work with us we will if not i reckon we'll just do it do you think uh that, that, that there was a line in the sand drawn this race or no? There was about 487 lines drawn in the sand. There was in so many different ways, so many different ways, there was lines drawn in the sand. And um, we have a group text. We had a group WhatsApp in um, each class. So we would 
put out the run orders. We would put out any delays that were going on. We really tried to over communicate. We weren't going to be perfect. Wes Buck said constantly we were going to fumble forward, but we were going to work together and communicate through it. The end of this race, the amount of people, the Chad heads, the Bob Tasca, the uh, Guidos, the Sean Langdon's, the um, Doug Coletta's, everybody you can imagine, Antron Brown, Ron Caps, everybody writing in this group text together that we've just been handling business through all weekend of how proud they were to be a part of this event. To me, that that's what did it by the end of it. Like I was proud of it when we were in the middle of it, but whenever I'm driving back and we're seeing that the people that spent their time, money and testing time to come out there, whether they qualified or not, Brittany Force, Steve Torrance didn't qualify. Billy Torrance. Out there spent their money <laughs> and they still were proud to be a part of it and still thanking everybody. Like I'm not fluffing it because I'm a part of it. I would have just kept my mouth shut here. If you can't see what a massive success this was, then wake up. So internally, I had talked to some folks that were worried about um, whether or not they could sell enough tickets for the race. Like, we were would, max right, would fans come? Like, you know, and, you know, I talked to me and Phil were talking about it. Phil said the place is going to be packed. Like, not, the place is going to be packed. And I'm like, we were well, worried they were going to shut us down. Right. They're not sure. And then uh, all of a sudden you see that home run ball. And I love seeing motorsports events. You know, we, we had a plan for if the fire marshal shut us down by like 10 30 a.m. on Saturday. That's it was amazing. nuts. It was cool. And I know that, uh, again, I know this was part my deal and all the things, but like it was, I feel like it really moved the needle. And if NHRA can get on board, that we can make everything better. If you didn't see that, Double decker VIP thing behind the starting line. That was really cool. Coolest shit in the world. Yeah. That's cool. Donald Long will be yeah. building that right now. Like Donald's probably got folks about us. To well, I think. Oh. <laughs> I have a wine. Oh, the wine has been has re arrived. Yes. Um. There to transition correctly. They're going to keep that. Dion just got here. Also, I have a party at my house. They're going to keep that. For the World Series of Promo, now, Let's I don't know what they're go. It, but they're keeping that oh, VIP gosh. deal for World Series of Promo. That's awesome. I was hoping they would do that. I don't really know if there's a full plan for it yet, right. but it's there. Me and Stevie will throw a cornhole up there. Yeah, we're gonna throw cornhole into a keg stand up there. We may need to go live. So, talking about scheduling, I don't know when we're gonna be able to do another show. there. My next six, I'm on the road for six weeks after tonight. Like when I leave here, I'm going to load my race car up and I'm going on the road for six weeks. We have coming up lights out mm -hmm. world series of pro mod mm -hmm. Gainesville, mm -hmm. Brazil racing in Brazil, radio racing in steel, Alabama yeah. week off in Phoenix. So if you are a race fan, your next six weeks, you can see anything you want to see. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. It's going to kill us but it's going to be fun. Yep. Yeah, I feel like I just rambled for 45 minutes, so I'm going to shut up now. Oh, you're good. Your wine glass is back full, so now you're going to shut up. Are we going to World Series Pro Mod? I am. I shall. No, I mean, are we it's, transitioning? Yeah. Yeah, let's go to World Series Pro Mod. I got to go. All right, so Flow Race was awesome. Lights out coming up is going to be awesome. World Series of Pro Mod. What do you think? Going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And I have sponsorship announcement. Oh, Pamela. Matt, can you put the buy her plant still up there real quick? We have a drum roll. <clears throat> so Melissa Murphy and Andrew Moick, uh, they run comp eliminator in D7. Andrew was the uh, champion uh, last year in division seven and comp eliminator. Um, their, their partners and their company is, uh, I think it's succulent studios. Uh, buyherplants.com. They're coming on board for the World Series of Pro Mod. Melissa and Andrew, or Andy, thank you. Um, they have obviously been involved in NHRA drag racing and door car drag racing. They've got dragsters and all this stuff. Uh, they've got a roots blown deal, uh, run six O's um, that they run in the comp eliminator stuff. And uh, I just can't thank them enough for coming on board. Um, we're going to do the World Series of Pro Mod, kind of get a feel for what's going and see what we can do from there. Um, but they literally re responded to uh, my post that I made, you know, looking for sponsorship for that race. And uh, and they're coming on as a big part of, of what we're doing at the World Series. So I just, you know, thank those guys. That's for awesome. Yeah. I wish Yingling would do that. Mm, yeah, me too. 
Also, um, it's Nike wood for me, but you know. But let's see. There, how many people are on right now? One point. Okay. Listen to all of you watching the show right now. Matt, put my right mower's uh, rendering up, please, sir. All right. Listen. Woo -woo. Listen. listen. All I need y'all to do, if at least half of you guys have an Instagram, maybe more. I know all of you have a Facebook. Most of you probably have both. Go to my page. Go to the, you can find the post. Go to either Wright's Insta, go to both Wright's Instagram and their Facebook page and just like it, follow it. It's all I need you to do for right now. We're working on something, hopefully going to do something for the World Series of Pro Mod. I got a lot of moving parts that are going into this. Um, but I need to show them that it's going to be worth their time. And this is just an easy way to do it. Just go follow. Them. It's all you have to do. Just go hit the follow button right now. Right, right now. Right now. Well, don't leave this. Well, yeah, leave the show. I don't care. Um, well, you're on your phone. You're they ain't watching this on their phone. I bet a lot of them are. Uh, it's super easy to do. Just go follow their page. I'm trying to get them to 30,000 followers on Instagram. They've got like 29,000 right now. And there's 1,600 of you on here. Just go to their Instagram and follow them. Clay, and follow them. Clay Thanks, said there's 29,001 because Clay Milliken trying to help out. Go when, get you it, see these, when you guys see these, I don't want to call them one-off deals, but when you see these new partnerships that show up on our cars, on Lyle's car, you never know what that is and what that can end up being. Right. You know, Scotty Cannon had an Oakland, a Oakley deal for a race, right? I've had deals that were supposed to be one race deals that end up being a decade long partnership. So thank you for these companies that come on and, and get to, you know, we get to partner with them. It makes a, it's a big, big deal. I don't think people understand how, how big of a deal it is. When and it goes that. and I, I think Clay talked about it when he was on the show, but a lot of the way that you can prove to them is exactly what I'm asking you guys to do. Like a lot of Clay's maybe potential partners or futures want to see his YouTube analytics, right? Like they want to see, what kind of traction he gets on YouTube and whatnot. And a good way for us to prove that we have some reach, because that's what it's all about today is how many people can you reach yep. is just by doing exactly what I'm asking you to do. Like I'm not asking you to donate or, or do anything or write them a letter. If you want to write them a letter, that'd be awesome. If you can have proper grammar and speaking. Yeah. Up. Don't be a redneck. What yep, was that but, thing right there you were just doing? You look like you're chewing on something. Well, Dion just got here and his dog just got some teeth removed. So I was wondering. Uh, oh, that was pretty. Uh, somebody's going to screenshot that. Lyle, what's the company name again? Right. Right Mowers. Right Manufacturing. Um, I'll Y'all go ahead and talk a little bit, but I'll pull up there just so you can kind of see what. Yeah, yep. there you go. Right commercial products. Here we go. Um, yeah. Stevie and Lyle would like to see Stevie and Lyle get more funding. <laughs> yep. That's their Instagram. <laughs> Man, you can't see that at all. Oh, you just exposed that you had a ring light. I got three of them, to be honest. I have none tonight, for the record. Um, and then they're uh, have a Facebook page as well. But if you go to either one of my pages, La Barnett Racing or my Instagram, I have very recent post um, about that. So that that was my plug. Are we um making predictions for World Series of Football? I am right. We're making predictions. Yeah. Um, they've made some rule changes. Do you feel better about it after today? Uh, no. There's more rule changes today? No, no, no. Uh, um, there were like three in a day. Um, I know. I'm trying to figure. Like, I don't need. I need to start screenshotting it because they keep. I mean, changing I just them. you know, or based forty two percent based on results from the U.S. Street Nationals. Um, I'm you know I know they're overall trying to slow the you know the class down a little bit, and I don't disagree right you know like i mean the, the freaking cars are fast you know and it takes pretty optimal conditions um yeah they've already gained 100 um good job they've take it takes pretty optimal conditions for you know even the the screw blower cars the pro charger cars um and the nitrous cars to run high 50s and as it seems the turbo cars have done it pretty effortlessly um, you know, and I don't, I think that based on the changes made from the U S street nationals to now, in my opinion, um, you know, because Mark Mickey has openly admitted that he doesn't feel like the weight does much to them. Um, now how else you try to slow them down between the U S streets and the world series of pro mod, 
I mean, there's nothing you can do without a bunch of testing and some R&D uh, without giving them like a boost limit. Nobody even knows what that is. So I get it. It's hard to slow them down, but I don't, I feel like they slowed, especially the screw blowers and the pro chargers. They made it really, they made it even harder for us to go that fast. And I think that um, with some people I know that are coming to run turbo cars um, and the, the potential of the nitrous car and Jim Halsey and Brandon Schweitzer and those guys showing up, um, I mean, it could be real bad, you know. I mean, we'll just have to well, see what happens. Let's just but. go off the facts from Bradenton, and then I want to know where some logic is and who's pushing the keys on the rules. All right, so let's let's take Todd Tuttero's Hail Mary 359 out because, A, it blew up and could not have run again. So Okay, okay. If, if we're going to do that, though, then we take King Cartuccio's 360 flat out. We are. That's fine because it couldn't run again. I think that the screw blower had the pro charger by a hundredth on average at that race. Okay, maybe two. You can argue it as one or two. All right. They slowed the pro charger down more than the screw. That's correct. Right? That's so correct. we had screw blower here, can't run with the turbo, blows it up, still can't win. All right. Pro chargers one or two back. All right. They slowed the pro charger down more, but slowed right. down the screw and probably didn't do nothing to the turbo. And I don't under I just don't understand it. Well, like, and that's what, you know, and, and I'll, I mean, Wes would tell you, you know, me and him got into it last week, literally, you know, like, yeah, we, it was we got into it, you know, because I said something at a time that I shouldn't have, right. You know, um, he had a lot going on and I said something I shouldn't have said, um, and we got into it over it, you know, I mean, everything's good, but that, that was kind of my point was that, you know, based off results, you know, and, and. I've heard some things. Well, you won the Snowbirds. Well, yeah, I didn't win the Snowbirds out running somebody. You didn't outrun everybody. You know, like, I mean, I beat Mark Mickey on a whole shot, you know, and then Scott Lang smoked the tire and I went 66 to win, you know, like it wasn't even for the conditions. It was a great run for that time of the day. But like Stevie said, like they slowed the pro charger down period uh, more than they did the screw. And it was already behind, you know, so I just, I don't know either, Stevie. I've, you know, Dillard, me and Dillard have had talks about, you know, kind of the logic behind it, and nobody really understands why they did what they did. Um, is that the final rule set that's, that's going to be ran? I don't know. Um, but if it is, um, I suspect, knowing what I know, I suspect you're going to see a turbo car win that deal. Um, unless Halsey or Franklin – um, somebody, Ricky even, you know, shows up and runs what a nitrous car can really run at the rule set they were given. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think you'll, I don't think you'll see a blower car. Um, maybe not even in the, in the final round, you know, I, I don't know. Here's the thing. If it messes around and it's wet, if it's 130 grains, if it's hot, a screw blower will not be relevant based on the turbo, reverse turbo car. You know. I mean, and struggle to be relevant anyway. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I just hope it's a good close race and that all the combinations have a shot to win. Yeah. I don't know what's public knowledge and what's not public knowledge, but whoever's running Mark Mickey's car. Yeah. Hmm? Has that been announced? What? Okay. Is that, whose smoke detector is that? Is that my smoke detector? Hey, or Dion's, Dion's fucking annoyed. Okay. And Dion's about to leave. Yes. Oh, it may be mine. I'm, Everybody in the comments are saying they're going to donate a battery. I do have one, but I don't know if it's mine. It is it yours? I, no, I, this is a new house. It's got to be Stevie. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm. Hey, there's the. Is that okay. The so who, who are y'all picking then? Let's do it because we're already in an hour and 10. I got five minutes left and I got to go. That's a I, I, I can't. Because it hasn't been announced yet. Okay. Oh. That's one of y'all. That's not here. It ain't me. That's one of y'all. Must be me. Because I just have my eyes on the prize. My smoke detector's not going off. It's probably well, mine. If it ain't if it ain't a double up, I'm gonna say it's whoever driving Mark Mickey's car. Fair enough. That's what I would say. If you, you have a you have a this vote and a this vote, you know? I'm voting with both I'm of voting. these. I'm not voting. You're not voting at all? No. Oh, it's mine. That's mine. Did y'all hear it again? Ah, 
Told you it wasn't mine. I'm not voting on World Series promo. I don't have uh, enough factual yeah, also, knowledge. Also, the, the one problem that I do have here is that I have the reigning champ right here. So, <laughs> and former anything else. Guess Guess so that's right. The former World Series of Pro Mod champion, the reigning champion. That's yeah, it's going to be Spencer, Spencer can make up three or four hundreds on the Christmas tree, but I just. He can. I guarantee you, none of y'all would have been picking him last year. Hell no. No. I got to figure out how to keep it green. Yeah, against you, Lal Barnett. I know how you keep it green. A little bit more in the delay box. Look, I done, I done told you. I cleaned mine out on the way. On the literally, I was rolling up. I loosened my belts back up, leaned up. I said, "Fuck this!" I zeroed that bitch out. Like, uh, uh. If he didn't beat me on a whole shot, I'll either go red or be real good. And I real, I was good. I wasn't great, but that's good. You were real, fourteen. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, Not when it matters. <laughs> I love it when she's muted. Are you I, muted? I'm muted. I, I, y'all must muted me. I'm back. I feel, oh, like, you too. I feel like both of y'all would have rathered to go red than lose on a whole shot to each other. Oh, a hundred percent. I'd have drove my shit. I <laughs> was my my you first agree? race in Scott Tidwell's car, and I'd have drove it in a strawberry patch if I'd have got beat on a whole shot. And yeah, okay. that. So anyway, those are my picks. Yeah. And then I'd have, and then I'd have yelled for Spencer like I needed help, and when he fucking waddled out there, I'd have just kicked his feet out from under him and fucking ran off. Fuck you, fuck motherfucker. You. He said, fuck you, Lyle. <laughs> um, we're going to have a, a shake and bake um, donation pot for Lyle to buy a 9-volt battery. I'm going to send one. <laughs> Good. I'll buy two. Perfect. All right. What yeah, else we got? You got? No, we got to roll. Nothing, nothing. We got to go. Same. I feel this like we did a really good job keeping it. I yeah. really appreciate you guys watching. Sorry, it's uh, quick. I got to go get the shadow ready so I can try to at least get in the field yeah. at RVW this week. Oh, I f before y'all go ahead, but uh, congratulations to Doug and Molly Cook on bringing yes. their new youngin into the world. Look at this cute little thing. Oh, my goodness. Look. Look at that baby. Oh, damn. That is Miss Kaya Cook. Um, that was after, a very, very after, happy. Papa. After 17 hours of labor. Oh, no, more than that. that. Well, of, yeah. yeah. Start, but, it was 44 total. Yes. But but that's ow, ow. still. Yeah, 17 of the, not, of the not good I'm stuff. Out. Right, but, of the not good time. Like, yes, I'm but out. they are home. Baby is healthy. Molly is healthy. Um, they are in the midst of the no sleep era of having a new baby, but, um, congratulations to Doug and Molly. If, for those of you who don't know, Doug is the owner or a owner of motion race works and TBM brakes and Rife sensors. And they have a freshy down there in Bradenton, which we will hopefully get to meet here in a couple weeks. Um, <laughs> I, Doug told me at U.S. Street, he said, I'm going to get that baby for it, and I'm bringing, I'm coming to Lights Out. So I'm glad they got it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I love <laughs> you, you Doug. So. I love you, Doug, but I don't think I'm going to see you in Georgia. Hey, Doug. By Lights Out, Doug might be ready to get out of the house and get some sleep at the Holiday Inn Express. Yeah, you just go ahead and That's talk to her. I feel like she's going to run that deal. So, Woo. all right. Well, let's rip it. Thank you guys for watching episode 30. We'll see you guys when we see you guys. Have a good one. Shake it back!